Purasartha Sanskrit, Purasartha literally means an object of human pursuit. It is a key concept in Hinduism, and refers to the four proper goals or aims of a human life. The four purasarthas are dharma righteousness, moral values, artha prosperity, economic values, kama pleasure, love, psychological values, and moksha liberation, spiritual values. All four purasarthas are important, but in cases of conflict, dharma is considered more important than artha or kama in Hindu philosophy. Moksha is considered the ultimate ideal of human life. At the same time, this is not a consensus among all Hindus, and many have different interpretations of the hierarchy, and even as to whether one should exist. Historical Indian scholars recognized and debated the inherent tension between active pursuit of wealth and pleasure and renunciation of all wealth and pleasure for the sake of spiritual liberation They proposed, "...action with renunciation," or "...craving free, dharma-driven action." Also called Nishkam karma as a possible solution to the tension. Topic <inaudible> etymology. Purusartha Purusartha is a composite Sanskrit word from Purusha Purusha and Artha. Artha Purusha means human being, soul, as well as universal principle and soul of the universe. Artha in one context means purpose, object of desire, and meaning. Together, purasartha literally means purpose of human being or object of human pursuit. Alf Hiltbeitel translates purasartha as goals of man. Prasad clarifies that man includes both man and woman in ancient and medieval Indian texts. Olivelle translates it as the aims of human life. Purasartha is also referred to as Kadurvarga. Topic: <inaudible> Discussion. Purasartha is a key concept in Hinduism, which holds that every human being has four proper goals that are necessary and sufficient for a fulfilling and happy life. Dharma – signifies behaviors that are considered to be in accord with RTA, the order that makes life and universe possible, and includes duties, rights, laws, conduct, virtues and right way of living. Hindu dharma includes the religious duties, moral rights and duties of each individual, as well as behaviors that enable social order, right conduct, and those that are virtuous. Dharma, according to Van Bittenen, is that which all existing beings must accept and respect to sustain harmony and order in the world. It is, states Van Bittenen, the pursuit and execution of one's nature and true calling, thus playing one's role in cosmic concert. Artha, signifies the means of life, activities and resources that enables one to be in a state one wants to be in. Artha incorporates wealth, career, activity to make a living, financial security and economic prosperity. The proper pursuit of Artha is considered an important aim of human life in Hinduism. Kama – signifies desire, wish, passion, emotions, pleasure of the senses, the aesthetic enjoyment of life, affection, or love, with or without sexual connotations. Gavin Flood explains Kama as love, without violating dharma moral responsibility, artha material prosperity and one's journey towards moksha spiritual liberation. Moksha – signifies emancipation, liberation or release. In some schools of Hinduism, moksha connotes freedom from samsara, the cycle of death and rebirth, in other schools moksha connotes freedom, self-knowledge, self-realization and liberation in this life. <laughs> Relative importance between four goals of life Ancient Indian literature emphasizes that dharma is foremost. If dharma is ignored, artha and kama, profit and pleasure respectively, lead to social chaos. The Gautama Dharmashastra, Apastamba Dharmasutra and Yajñavakya Smrta, as examples, all suggest that dharma comes first and is more important than artha and kama. Kama Sutra states the relative value of three goals as follows, artha is more important and should precede kama, while dharma is more important and should precede both kama and artha. Kautilya's Arthashastra, however, argues that Artha is the foundation for the other two. Without prosperity and security in society or at individual level, both moral life and sensuality become difficult. Poverty breeds vice and hate, while prosperity breeds virtues and love, suggested Kautilya. 
Cotillia adds that all three are mutually connected, and one should not cease enjoying life, nor virtuous behavior, nor pursuit of wealth creation. Excessive pursuit of any one aspect of life with complete rejection of other two, harms all three including the one excessively pursued. The Sastras, states Kane, observe that the relative precedence of Artha, Kama and Dharma are naturally different with age. Moksha is considered in Hinduism as the Parama Purasartha or ultimate goal of human life. Topic. Tension between four goals of life Indian scholars recognized and have debated the inherent tension between renunciation and moksha on one hand, and the active pursuit of kama and artha on the other. This has led to the concepts of pravriti, pravriti, pravriti and nivriti, 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 with former meaning, giving or devoting oneself to external action, while the latter means withdrawing and restraining oneself from external action in order to focus on one's own liberation. Artha and Kama are pravirti, while moksha is nivirti. Both are considered important in Hinduism. Manumriti, for example, describes it as Activity, according to orthodox tradition, is of two kinds, pravirti and nivirti. The first kind of activity leads to progress abudaya, and the second, to perfection nisriyasa. Indian scholars offered a creative resolution to the tension between action, filled life and renunciation, driven life, by suggesting the best of both worlds can be achieved by dedicating oneself to action with renunciation. That is when action is without attachment or craving for results. Action must be engaged in because it is dharma, that is, it is good, virtuous, right, a duty and a moral activity, and not because of one's craving for the results or material rewards without any consideration for dharma. This idea of craving free, dharma-driven action has been called nishkam karma in Bhagavad Gita. Other Indian texts state the same answer to tension between pursue wealth and love versus renounce everything, purisarthas, but using different words. Isa Upanishad, for example, states, Act and enjoy with renunciation, do not covet. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins of Purasartha theory The concept of moksha developed only in the Upanishads, while the early Vedas treating the goals of human life commonly refer to Kama, Artha and Dharma as the Travarga, or three categories of possible human pursuits. The Dharmasastras and the epics Ramayana and Mahabharata are the first known sources that comprehensively present the notion that integrated living entails the pursuit of four goals or ends. Prasad 2008 states that the division between the Travarga and Moksha is intended to highlight the context between the social Travarga and personal Moksha spheres. The sannyasa is entirely focused on the pursuit of moksha without violating dharma. Bhadhyana Dharmasutra, completed by about 7th century BC, states the following behavioral vows for a person in sannyasa. These are the vows a sannyasi must keep. Abstention from injuring living beings, truthfulness, abstention from appropriating the property of others, abstention from sex, liberality, kindness, gentleness are the major vows. There are five minor vows, abstention from anger, obedience towards the guru, avoidance of rashness, cleanliness, and purity in eating. He should beg for food without annoying others, any food he gets he must compassionately share a portion with other living beings, sprinkling the remainder with water he should eat it as if it were a medicine. Bhadhyana also makes repeated references to the sannyasa ascetic stage and its behavioral focus, such as in verses 2.13.7 and 11.18.13. This reference, Olivelle states, is found in many early to mid-first millennium BC texts, and is clearly from gnomic poetry about an established ascetic tradition by the time Bhadhyana Dharmasutra and other texts were written. Katha Upanishad, in hymns 2.1-2.2 contrasts the human feeling of pleasant prayas, prayas with that of bliss sreyas, sreyas praising the latter. The hymns of Rig Veda in Book 10 Chapter 136, mention Muni, Muni monks, mendicants, holy man, with characteristics that mirror those found in later concepts of renunication practicing, moksha-motivated ascetics sannyasins and sannyasinis. These Muni are said to be Kessins, Kessin long-haired wearing mala clothes, mala dirty, soil-colored, yellow, orange, saffron and engaged in the affairs of mind, meditation. 
Kesianim Kesi Visam Kesi Bibharti Rodasa Kesi Visvam Sverders Kesidam Jotirasiate, Munayo Vitarasana Pasanga Visate Mala Vedasiano Drajim Yanti Yadaveso Avaksata, he with the long loose locks of hair supports Agni, and moisture, heaven, and earth, he is all sky to look upon, he with long hair is called this light. The Munis, girdled with the wind, wear garments of soil hue, they, following the wind's swift course go where the gods have gone before. Scarf states, "...there are abundant references both to the Travarga and Kitravarga in Hindu literature throughout the ages." <laughs> Purasartha-focused literature Each of these four canonical Purasarthas was subjected to a process of study and extensive literary development in Indian history. This produced numerous treatises, with a diversity of views, in each category. Some Purasartha focused literature include On Dharmathi's texts discuss Dharma from various religious, social, duties, morals and personal ethics perspective. Each of six major schools of Hinduism has its own literature on Dharma. Examples include Dharma Sutras particularly by Gautama, Apastamba, Bhadayana and Vasistha and Dharma Sastras particularly Manasmrta, Yajñavakya Smrta, Naradasmrta and Visnusmrta. At personal Dharma level, this includes many chapters of Yoga Sutras. On Arthartha related texts discuss Artha from individual, social and as a compendium of economic policies, politics and laws. For example, the Arthashastra of Kautilya, the Kamandakya Nitasara, Brihaspati Sutra, and Sukra Nidhi. Olivelle states that most Artha-related treatises from ancient India have been lost, on Kamathis discuss arts, emotions, love, erotics, relationships and other sciences in the pursuit of pleasure. The Kama Sutra of Vatsyayana is most well known. Others' texts include Ratirahasya, Jayamangala, Smaradipika, Ratamanjari, Radharatnapradipika, and Anga Ranga, among others. On Mokshathis, develop and debate the nature and process of liberation, freedom, and spiritual release. Major treatises on the pursuit of moksha include the Upanishads, Vivekachudamani, Bhagavad Gita, and the Sastras on Yoga. The Sanskrit epics devote major sections on Purasarthas, in particular debating Dharma. The ancient Tamil literature of the Tarukural focuses on the first three of the Purasarthas Dharma, Artha, and Kama without discussing moksha, suggesting that the proper pursuit of the other three will inevitably lead to the fourth. The Nalatiyar, another work of the Sangam literature, too, follows similar philosophy as the Tarukural. Ashrama <laughs> The four Purasarthas are often discussed in the context of four ashramas or stages of life brahmacharya, student, grihastha, householder, vanaprastha, retirement and sannyasa, renunciation. Scholars have attempted to connect the four stages to the four Purasarthas, however Olivelle dismisses this, as neither ancient nor medieval texts of India state that any of the first three ashramas must devote itself predominantly to one specific goal of life. The fourth stage of sannyasa is different, and the overwhelming consensus in ancient and medieval Indian texts is that anyone accepting sannyasa must entirely devote to moksha aided by dharma, with a complete renunciation of artha and kama, with the known exception of Kama Sutra. Most texts make no recommendation on the relative preference on artha or kama, that an individual must emphasize in what stage of life. The Kama Sutra states, The life span of a man is one hundred years. Dividing that time, he should attend to three aims of life in such a way that they support, rather than hinder each other. In his youth he should attend to profitable aims artha, such as learning, in his prime to pleasure kama, and in his old age to dharma and moksha. This text does not mention the ashramas however equals equals see also